Hello, this is Matthew Campagna from TheTurningGate.net, and in this demonstration I'd like to show you the new uh, layout mode that is available for the Gallery Index in TTG Pages and TTG Auto Index. Uh, in this demonstration I'm going to be using the Auto Index, but uh, the controls are identical in TTG Pages, so if you're using that engine uh, you should still be able to follow along. So what we're looking at here is uh, a default layout for the auto index. Uh, as you can see, I've worked on the site a little bit. The colors are all different from default. But uh, the general layout, which is here, uh, we've got a couple, some index entries uh, with a small thumbnail, album title, description, uh, is basically what you would find when you load up the auto index by default. So we're going to open up the color palette and scroll down to the yellow gallery index subheading where we begin options for our layout. Uh, and there's a new option here, which is a grid type. And there are two options uh, under grid type, descriptive and iconic. So descriptive is what we're looking at now. And that's the classic layout for uh, the gallery index that you should already be familiar with if you've been using previous versions. Uh, and if you want to go ahead and continue using this, then you just leave grid type set to descriptive. You scroll down uh, to the yellow subheading for grid type descriptive, and there are, are all the options that you can use to customize your text, colors, and layout uh, when using the descriptive layout mode. Um, the new display mode is iconic. So we go up to grid type, select iconic, and uh, as you can see, the title and description are now gone. We've got a box with a thumbnail, and if we mouse over, it starts bringing up uh, the album title. It doesn't look like much when you first make that switch, but if we scroll down to the yellow subtitle uh, for grid type iconic, we get options for configuring this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, increase the size of these thumbnails to sort of fill that space. Keep in mind that the thumbnails you see here, or the images you see here, uh, do not represent what the final gallery is going to look like when we export the auto index it's going to be empty and uh, it will be populated later by uh, the image galleries that you put on your website. Um, so these are just here so that we have an idea of what things look like while we're designing. So as you can see I went ahead I changed the thumbnail width and height to uh, just increase those images to fill that space. It gives you a better idea of what this thing is for. We have large iconic index entries for our galleries. You can then go to the album box width and height and start adjusting sizes in there. Say, for example, I wanted a grid of square thumbnails. Um, I would set those to be equal. So I've got width and height set to 150. I can then go ahead and adjust my number of columns. And uh, as you can see, I'm getting a nice grid here. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do. Say I wanted to have a narrow tall boxes, maybe I'm going to set my width to 125, my height to 250, and then I'm going to say six columns, uh, add some grid spacing so that uh, they have a little breathing room, and as you can see I've got uh, a nice layout for my gallery index. Now if you want a border you can go ahead and use these sliders to add a border. I'm going to make my border white. Um, and for the titles, you've got some options. Uh, you can change the font size and the font family or the font type being used. You can also decide whether you want the title to be normal or boldface. Uh, if you want it, you can have it come down from the top rather than coming up from the bottom. And uh, those titles can either slide in on mouse over like they do now. They can be turned so that they're always on and you can also set it to never show titles, which is a great option if you want to build titles into your th custom thumbnail images. Uh, so that's basically how you go ahead and set that up. Just to give you a quick idea of some possible configurations now that you have in the, uh, the gallery index, there's the two column descriptive layout, which is kind of the default. You can change the number of columns to a three column descriptive layout, four column, one column, whatever. Uh, then with the new iconic mode, we've got the columns we were just looking at. You can also, if you 
maybe you're doing a, a gallery index of panoramic galleries, you can do very wide thumbnails in, in a single column. Uh, and you can also create square icon grids. So a lot of new options, a lot of new possibilities for your design here. So let's take a look at one of these that's already online. Um, like I said, the images that you see are not going to be exported. The gallery index is going to grab thumbnails from the galleries that you have installed. So if your image galleries have smaller thumbnails, you might find a problem like this, where your thumbnails are not large enough to fill your gallery index entry spaces. If this is the case, you will probably want to create custom thumbnails. Uh, so a couple steps in doing that. First we're going to jump back into Lightroom and we're going to load up an image gallery. Uh, the first thing we need to do is when we are creating an image gallery we need to tell that gallery to use a custom thumbnail. Now because I'm recording video it's just taking a, a moment to load here. Computers are a little sluggish when I'm recording. Um, so here's High Slide Gallery Pro. Um, maybe I've got this gallery ready to go. I'm going to grab more images. And sluggish, sluggish, sluggish. So when you're creating your gallery, there we go. You go up to Site Info, scroll down to the yellow heading Info for TTG Auto Index, and under Album Thumbnail, I'm just going to type in thumbnail.jpg, and that tells the gallery uh, when it's being listed in a gallery index to use thumbnail.jpg as the thumbnail image for that gallery index entry. So then you would export the gallery. Uh, I already have stuff exported, so to save time I'm going to skip it, but you would export, put that on your desktop. Um, and now we need to make thumbnail.jpg. So we would, you can do that in lots of ways. You can make it in Photoshop if you want to uh, do it that way and make you know, a cool custom image, maybe with some text or a logo or something on it. Uh, a very easy way of creating a thumbnail image though is just to do it in Lightroom. So going back online, um, I want to fill this space. Uh, I know that this is 150 pixels wide by 250 pixels tall. And so those are the the aspect ratios I'm going to use for creating my thumbnails. So as a demonstration I'll do this one. I'm going to actually I'm going to before I take it into develop create a, uh, a virtual copy so that I don't mess up my original image. Then go into crop, set aspect ratio, enter custom 125 by 250. Enter that and then I can go ahead and move this around until I have an icon that I'm happy with. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, jumping back into the grid, I can then export that thumbnail. So I'm going to stick it on my desktop for the time being. I'm going to name it thumbnail. It's going to be a JPEG SR. GB. Uh, so you can set your quality low because it's kind of a small image. You want to load quickly. And then resize to fit. And I put in my box dimension. So 125 by 250. And hit export. So it's cranking out that thumbnail. Which takes just a moment. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Again, when I'm recording video, computer sort of goes to a crawl. All right, so that's it. I'm going to minimize Lightroom. And uh, you can see here I've got an exported gallery. So all I would do then is take that thumbnail.jpg and move it inside my gallery folder, which I can then upload to my website um, to use in my gallery index. So I already have an index online that's been fitted with custom thumbnails. Let's have a look. So as you can see, nice big thumbnails fill that space. I've got my title on hover, and it's a, a very attractive, very nicely laid out uh, gallery index for my website. And that's really all there is to it. Very simple.